without further ado, let's get back into patterns and relationships. All right. So we were looking at uh, linear relationships last week, and we learned that in a linear relationship, you can show it in a table form, and then you can represent it on a graph. And then right at the end, we even try to build an equation to represent the relationship. So we're going to take that further today. So we're going to look at equations, tables, and graphs. But we are going to make these equations and tables a little bit more complicated, but you'll see what I mean as we go throughout the lesson. All right, so we're going to start off with an easy one. Here's a scenario. So Tumi works at a restaurant during the evenings and is paid according to the formula or equation shown below. Now you can see here that we're using words, not variables, because this is math lit. We don't want to think like we're in core maths. We don't like those things. So we've got pay, because Tumi's pay, to get that, you need to take 12 and multiply it by the hours that are worked. Okay, so that's the formula. So pay, to get pay, this equals 12 times the hours worked. Just remember when you have 12 in front of a bracket like that, then that means you need to multiply by what's inside the brackets. Okay, um, all right, so let's get started. Here is the first question. And you guys are going to get stuck in from the word go, making you work from the beginning. So have your pen and paper ready in your calculator. It says complete the table by, low of by filling in the missing values M and N. Look carefully at the table. Don't be tricked. We need to work out M and N. All right, I'm going to give you two minutes to do this one. And then we're going to try it ourselves. Off you go. Oh. Oh, Phyllis Jordan, too fast. All right, we got people with answers coming in. Um, try and make sure that you guys get your own solutions. Don't look at the ones that are popping up. Try and make sure that you get yours right on your own. Let's see how you do with the calculations. All right, the answers are coming in thick and fast. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's see how we do this. All right, I'm going to create a little bit of space down here for me to work. Um, let's do it on the side. Okay, so the first one I want to do is I want to work out N, this one over here. All right. So to work out N, which is pay, I can actually use the formula because formula says pay is equal to 12 times the hours worked. So I'll use the letter P here for pay. I'm going to write the whole word out. And I take 12 and I multiply it by the hours worked. Now the hours worked, if I go straight up, there's four. So I can substitute four in there for the hours work. And we should get an answer of 48. And I know Kia is going to say something now when she sees what Don't I've written. Don't forget your units. <laughs> there we go. All right. So the units are rand. So we need 48 rands. Okay. So that's for M. Okay. So we, we should say, in fact, if you want to replace P for M, yeah, it's fine. But M equals 48 rand. All right. Now, sorry. That was N, not M. Okay. Now we're going to move on to M. All right now, M is hours worked. Okay, this is hours worked. So if I take my formula again, P is equal to 12, and then open the brackets here. Now, instead of substituting in the hours worked to get my pay, I'm looking for this hours worked. I'm going to call it M for now. All right. And on the 
the P side of the formula, they give us the pay value. So they tell us that the pay value is 84 rand. Okay. So to get in here, I just need to get rid of that 12. How do I get rid of that 12? Well, it's attached to the M with multiplication. So I'll do the inverse operation. I'll divide both sides by 12. Okay, so M is equal to 84 divided by 12. And that should give me seven, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so M is equal to seven. So she has to work, uh, Jimmy has to work seven hours to get 84 rand. Okay. Okay, it looks like the answers are pretty good. Yes. Yeah, we are off to a fabulous start. We're off to a good start. Okay. Phyllis is a guy. Sorry, Phyllis. All right, Phyllis is, is not a girl. It's a guy. All right, here we go. So we're going to move on to the next step. Now we need to work out, and I'm going to remove this. If you need to, uh, at any point uh, as you're doing this lesson, if you need to, uh, save the calculations and you want to have a look at them later. If you're using a laptop, uh, you can use a print screen function. Uh, it'll copy the image of the screen and then you must paste it somewhere else. Or if you're on your phones, uh, just take a screenshot of the calculations because I'm going to remove it now just for some space. Okay. All right. So let's remove this because we're going to answer the next question. The next question says, Calculate the number of hours worked if Tumi earns 204 rand. All right, let's see how fast you guys can do that. How many hours did Tumi work if wow. the pay is 204 rand? Good answer Gab already. That was so fast. <laughs> you were still explaining and then an answer popped up. I was like, wow. These guys and girls, oh my gosh. As soon as the next question comes up, they want to do it. It's fantastic. It's enthusiastic. Brilliant. Yeah, no. I think every day should be Valentine's Day. <laughs> Everyone's got <laughs> energy and they're excited. They're buzzing. I hope everyone had a good Valentine's Day. All right, we've got some answers coming up. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see if your answer is the same. All right, so uh, calculate the number of hours if the pay is to me earns 204, so that's pay. So to me is pay 204. Okay, so in my formula, uh, I'll put you at H for hours or HRS for hours. Uh, how many hours if the pay is 204? So 204 has to go on this side of the formula. And we need to work out the hours. Again, we're going to divide by 12, divide by 12. And I'm feeling lazy. I'm going to get the calculator to do the work for me. So 204 divided by 12 gives me 17. Very good. All right. So the hours that Jimmy worked, 17 hours. Okay, all right. So we're learning how to use the formula here to help us get the answers, which is fantastic. And in the previous lessons, um, what we did was we also, when we asked to solve for these unknown letters here, what a lot of you guys did at the beginning was you noticed there was a pattern every single time, um, which is adding on 12. Okay, so some of you might have used that method where you add on 12 to 36 to get the value of n, which is fine. As long as you can see that all these numbers go up by one, then you can find n's value, all right, because it's a constant difference, okay? Uh, but it poses a problem with 84 because 84 doesn't form part of the pattern. So you might jump a couple of times to get to 84, but if that number is really, really big, you're going to do a lot of jumps to get there. So a formula really, really helps in these situations. Okay, so try and um, learn how to use the formula, substitute in, change the formula around to get things that you need. Okay, now you guys aren't gonna really be able to do this one, so I'm gonna do it for you. It says now draw a line graph to represent the relationship. Okay, so we're gonna use the table of information to help us plot a graph here. I'm gonna use blue for the line. Um, before I draw this line, can someone please put in chat 
what type of linear graph are we going to see? We learned about these last week. I know Peter is very good with this. Uh, Vuyo, we've got 17. Hey, if you 204 divided by 12 is 17, check your calculation. Um, all right, what kind of linear relationship? It is a linear relationship, but which one is it? I don't know if you guys can remember the names from last week. Where's Ompile? He usually is, is quick with these answers. And Kamo. And Kamo, yes. Huh. They're quiet now. There we go. Ompile says they can't oh. see the graph. Oh, you don't even need to see the graph. You don't even need to. So if you look at the table, that should give you a clue as to what kind of graph it's going to be. It is linear, so I'm telling you it is going to be a line graph, but which one? There were a couple that we looked at last week. Oh, they've forgotten everything. You see, this is what Valentine's Day does. <laughs> this is with your brain. Alzondi, you missing a few words there. All right. So direct. Yes, it is a, a direct relationship. Uh, proportional relationship. It, is proportional yes fixed fixed is the one that goes horizontal were your yes direct proportional good okay and there was another way said there were two words i was looking for constant something All right the direct proportion is correct you also could use the words constant something yes direct proportion is good constant something not constant fixed Ah, boy, yo. who was first there? Oh, people kushe. Well done. Constant increase. Good stuff. Boy, yo. Well done. Constant increase. Okay. And there's administrator also with the answer. All right. So it is a direct proportional relationship. The relationship is directly proportional. Um, but the type of linear graph is a constant increase linear graph. Okay. And, we, and how do we see that? By these values over here in the table. We can see that these whoops, we can see that these values are going up. All right. So the plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. That's a constant uh difference between the values, and it's because so it's a constant increase. Okay. So how does it look on, on the, the axes? Well, for one hour's work, we got 12. So I'll put a dot there. For two hours work, we got 24. For three, we got 36. For four, we got 48. And the table, we had to calculate five. No, we didn't have to calculate five. We, we're going to skip those two because the table didn't have them. I'm going to go to seven for 84 because we worked that out. Okay, so I've got all these dots here. Now, I'm sure you can see how these dots are all lining up. All right. And do we start from zero? Well, let's think about it. If, if Tumi doesn't work any hours, then she won't get any money. So she won't get any pay. All right, so we can start at zero. So I'm going to start at zero there and go through all these dots and line them up and draw a line. Okay. Now, just a hint. When you get one of these tables and you know it's the constant increase or direct proportional relationship, you need to check your line. Okay. So sometimes what the guys do is they might make a mistake in a table and then they draw that mistake onto the line so what sometimes happens is maybe uh let's do the last one so maybe the last calculation that you did or one of the questions didn't give you 84 m but gave you something like 64 or 65 okay then you'll see that this graph doesn't go up exactly straight if you join those dots you might stop there and then you might draw another line to that point that you calculated okay so these Values are all given in the table. And then this one over here is the one that you calculated. So if you if you know, this is why it's important to recognize it's a constant increase or direct proportion. If you know it is that kind of relationship, then it should go up straight all the way. All right, so when you see your graph do this, you need to go back and check your calculations on one of those questions because it should go up in a straight line. Okay, so that's a way to help you check if you've done your calculations right. So in this case, we know it's a, a direct portion relationship. So it should go straight up in a line. 
like that. A straight line. You shouldn't have to move your ruler from one end all the way to the top. It should be a straight line. Okay. Um, all right. So let's move on. We're going to change it slightly now. Okay. So have a look at this graph. Direct proportion, constant increase based on this formula that we had over here. So that's what this formula gives us on the graph. Now we're going to move on to a new scenario. Well, before that, let's do this. Let's do this. Determine how much pay Tumi would receive if she worked five and a half hours. Let's just quickly check that because now this is different to the other ones. We've got a decimal hour. All right. So determine how much Tumi would receive if she worked five and a half hours. Can you quickly do that calculation? And we're just going to check uh, decimals and how they affect our answer. How much pay for five and a half hours? Ooh, I'm sure the calculators are working now. Okay, we've got user with 66. We've got 66. All right, looks like we've got an answer. Okay, let's quickly check. Let's see if 66 is correct. All right, hold on to your answers. Let's have a look. So we're going to substitute our hours, which are 5,5, excuse me, into the formula. And then, like I'm sure you guys did, we're going to use the calculator just to make sure that we're safe. Times 5.5. And yes, the calculator doesn't work for us. And we get 66 rands because this is pay. Okay, so we get 66 <laughs> rand. <laughs> All right, 66, yes. Who was that, was it? Ah, uh, Jill, went there, 66. That 66. is what I'm laughing at, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five and a half hours, 66 rand, 12 rand an hour. Please guys, when you get a job, you're gonna be doing a lot more of that, I promise you. Okay, so yes, we can use decimals in our formula. Uh, you can put decimals to two, three, four, five, six decimal places. As long as you substitute that number into the formula in the right place, you get the correct answer. Okay, let's have a look at what else I have for you. Uh oh. Oh no, Dale, what if we change the equation? So, same scenario, but now we're going to change the equation. Tumi works at a restaurant during the evenings and is paid according to the formula shown below. She is paid a basic wage, all right, a basic wage, and then an hourly rate. Okay, so in the previous scenario, we just had an hourly rate. Now we have a basic wage and an hourly rate. So even if Tumi doesn't work any hours, she should still get the basic wage. Okay, so even if she just comes to work and she doesn't do any work at the restaurant, she should still get a basic wage, which is a much better situation for her. All right, so we're going to fill in this table. I'm going to give you guys like four minutes. You're going to use that formula. You're going to fill in the table, and then I'm going to do it, and we're going to check our answers. Okay. You don't have to type into chat if it's too much to chop, just as long as you have it written down somewhere, as long as you can check uh, your answer with the one that we're gonna do here. All right, so we're gonna fill in this table. Let's see how it looks. If you want to draw up a little table and then write in the answers underneath, so zero, one, two, three, four, and seven, and then just the numbers and underneath, that's fine. I'm going to use the calculator to help me with this one. We'll give you a minute or two, and then we'll we'll have a look.
All right. I'm sure there are some answers there. Uh, I'm going to start doing them and you can check as we go. All right. For zero hours, all right? I don't even need to use the calculator for this one. For zero hours worked, okay? So we have an hourly rate of 12 rand for every hour, but there were no hours worked. So we can't even use that part of the formula. We only have the basic wage, okay? So this will be, whoopsie. Type in some numbers here. So 200. And let's stretch this table out. I need as much space as possible. Okay. So we've got 200 Rand for zero hours. Okay. Now, what happens if we have one hour's work? So I'm going to put a formula on my calculator now. And I'm going to put a 12 and then a bracket. And I'm going to close the bracket. So on the screen there, you can see my formula. Okay. So all I need to do now is go into that bracket and change the number of hours. So if I put in one there and press enter, we're going to get 212. So you all should have got that. So 212. Okay. Now I go back to my calculator. The formula is still there. So I'm going to go into my formula and just change the one to a two, press enter, and now we got 224. So 224. Now I'm going to go back into the calculator, change it to three, press enter, 236. Change the hours of work to a four, enter, 248. I mean, it's pretty easy to see what the answers are going to be. I'm going up in multiples of 12. And then here comes the different one. So now I'm going to go in and change it to a seven and press enter. So 284. Okay. So very similar to our previous answers, but all we have is this basic wage included now in our answer. All right. Now the, the words that they use here are basic wage. They can also use uh, the words a flat rate. Okay, almost wrote flat rate. All right, a flat rate. <laughs> we can also have a flat fee. Okay, um, or constant rate or constant fee. So those words are often used to describe this basic wage that I'm talking about here. Okay, so all we're doing is taking that basic wage and adding on our hours work to calculation. All right, so these are the values, these are the answers. Let's have a look and see now what is this going to look like. There we go. See you guys. Too clear. Enough. All right. Brilliant answers. Well done. Well done, guys. Thanks for doing the hard work. All right. Let's see now what this looks like on the graph. I'm going to move this table down a bit. Let's see if I can bring it down so I can have a look at it while I put stuff into my graph. Okay. So here's our table and here's our graph. Okay, so for zero hours. Now, before for zero hours, we had zero pay, but now there's a basic, there's a basic, uh, basic wage. So for zero hours, even if Tumi comes in and doesn't do any work, as she gets into the restaurant, she's already earned herself two hundred rand. So this starts at two hundred. It doesn't start at zero. Okay, at one we've got two hundred and twelve. Oof, which is about there's 10, so 12 is about there. 12 is there. At two, we've got 224, which is about there. At three, we've got 336, which is about there. At four, 248, which is about there. Uh, five, we don't have. Six, we don't have. Seven, we've got 284. So seven should be 284. So it's 280, so it's about there. Okay. Now, again, when we look at our uh, table, this is going up at the same value every single time, except for the last one, there's a jump of plus 12. So this tells us it's a constant increasing graph, direct portion, but it's got a basic underlying basic value there, okay? So we're gonna start at 200, 
and try and go through every single dot. So we can see here the one dot was a bit skew. All right, so let's put it back up there and try and go through every single dot. We should still see a straight line. Okay, if this table shows us a constant increase of 12, we should still see a, a straight line. So if your line goes straight and then down and then up and then like that or something like that, there's an error there in your calculation. So you can actually use your graph to check the calculations that you've done in the table. Okay, so watch your graph when you draw it. It should be a line if there's a constant increase in the values in the table. Okay, do we have any questions up until now? Ah, not direct proportion. Yes, this it's directly proportional for the hourly rate, but we've got a flat basic in there. So not, not you're right, not exactly directly proportional. Only part of this but is directly proportional. All right. Anyone got a question? No questions. If there's no questions, then. Is everyone happy? We're all good. Can we move on? Because I'm going to give you an example to do now. All right. Okay. Let's move on then. Okay. So let's just, I want to recap quickly before I give you this example. Uh, we had a basic wage and a rate in our formula. And we still have this constant increase in our graph, but we have the constant increase starting from 200 because that is the basic uh, wage that needs to be added into the formula. Okay. Now, it's your time to shine. All right, here's the first part of the question. I think I hope you can see it on the, on the screen. A local supermarket has a bakery that bakes bread for sale to the community. The weekly fixed costs, which in our water and electricity, to bake bread is 250 rand, and each loaf costs 8 rand 50. All right, so here is a table showing the costs to break, sorry, to bake loaves of bread, right? This is not pay, this is cost now. And there is a fixed cost, all right? They're using the words fixed cost here, and it's 250 rand, and then we have uh, a rate, of eight rand fifty per loaf. Okay, so there's two parts. It's just like the previous scenario. Can you guys please work out? I've got letters uh, M and N, but I'm actually talking about A and B in the table. All right, so we're looking for A and B in the table. Please don't tell me the answers already on the screen. Ah, okay, good. Oh, I was getting worried if guys have already got answers for question one. Oh my goodness, come on. Sure. Camo is just ready to learn. No, <laughs> Camo's on fire. All right, it's, it's hot enough, thank you, Camo. Right, we're sweltering in the heat and the and the menu. You're bringing fire now to the lesson. Oh, you see? Hey. Sonia's fast. Yo, A is A20. These guys are fast. I just hope the the um the quality is good. Good speed, I hope. You Good speed and good quality. All right, the answers are flying in. Ah, okay, the question. The local supermarket has a bakery that bakes bread for sale. The weekly costs and the fixed costs specifically to bake bread for, in one week is 250 Rand. And after that, it costs 8 Rand 50 for every loaf. So the table shows the weekly costs 
for zero lobes all the way up to 300 lobes. Okay, so you're trying to fill in the table for different number of lobes in a week. And we're just looking for missing letter A and missing letter B. Oh, good answers coming in. It's not that easy. Not that easy at all. All right, we'll give it one or two more minutes and then we'll check our answers. All right, the answers are coming in thick and fast. All right, looks like we've got most of the answers in. If you haven't, excuse me, typed your answer into chat, don't worry. As long as it's in front of you or on your calculator or somebody that you can see. So that when we do these answers here, you can compare, that's fine. Okay, but it looks like we've got a whole lot of people with answers in. Let's have a look and see how we can do this. Now, I'll be very interested to know how many of you use the table to try and figure out your answers or how many of you used a formula. I'll be very interested to know because a formula is real easy to use here. And these last two uh, columns are a little bit different to the first five. Okay, so I'll be very interested to see how you guys do, uh, did this. I'm sure it would be easier to use the formula. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a formula and I'm put it on my calculator and then it'll, it should give me the same answer over and over again by just changing uh, the number of lobes. So they say there is a fixed cost, which means no matter how many lobes you break, uh, break, bake, you have to pay the fixed cost. Okay, now there is a mistake in here. The total cost for should be 400 guys. Oh, I'm gonna get the stone thrown at me. It should be 400. Let's check if that's gonna work. All right, let's see, 400 plus uh, 850 multiplied by 40. Let's check if this works. Oh, that's wrong. Um, I put times instead of plus. Let's go back, put a plus there. 740. Ah, so this, this initial one was incorrect. Ah, this poses a fantastic problem. We can actually correct the error with our calculations. So I'm going to delete them all. Okay, there must be an error in the calculation. All right, I'm going to delete them all. Which one was A? 120. Okay, so A was over here. Let's see. All right, so this is the formula that we have to use. I'm going to go back to the 250 that was originally there. This poses a fantastic opportunity. We're going to put in all the information. All right, so 8 rand 50 per loaf and 2 rand 50 as a fixed weekly cost, let's see what we can get. Okay, so if we bake, let's in fact do the first one, which is zero. So put in zero there, we should get 250. Okay, so I'm gonna type them in as we go. 250, and then go back to the calculator. What if we put in a 40 there? Let's quickly fill this in and press enter. We should get 590. Oh, I'm very excited to see what the answers are going to be. Very excited. Okay, for 80, let's change the 40 to an 80 and see what we get. 930. Oh, I wonder if people are worrying about the answers now. 930. 
Okay, what if we have 120? Now 120 was A, all right? 120 was A, so let's put in 120. Using our formula from the question, whew, we should get 1,270. That is huge. 1,270. All right, guys, I'm in the wrong business. I should be baking, breaking, baking. <laughs> I feel like you feel like breaking things today. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, breaking bread. That's what people do actually at dinner time. They break the bread. It's a traditional thing. All right. One, one, six, one, zero. All right. So one, six, one, zero. And B was one that you had to get. Okay. So I am going to come back to B, but let's go back to 300 for now. Let's put in 300 and 2,800. Now, this really poses a very interesting scenario because if I go back to the answers, <laughs> if I go back to the answers, yeah, you see, 820 and 240. Now, I think the people who are getting 820 and 240 didn't create a formula. And I think they looked at the difference between the numbers in the table and then tried to infer from that. Okay, the numbers, there was a mistake in the, in the numbers in the table. So the formula and the numbers in the table weren't correlating. So if we corrected this and remove all the numbers in the table and just use the formula, these are the answers that we should get. You have to agree with me. So I think what you guys are doing is using the table to help you get your answers, which can be tricky because sometimes they won't make the first five or four numbers consecutive. They might make them totally different. They could put uh, 130 there and they could put um, 50 here and make them absolutely different. And you won't be able to find a consecutive pattern. Okay. So you're going to have to rely on the formula. In fact, that's why I said, I hope you guys are using a formula here because it's the safest way to solve this problem. All right. So 120 was 1,270. And let's go back down to B. Uh, to find B, we actually need a value. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a value. Hmm, how do I do this in secret? Ah, I'll do it in secret over here. I'm going to put a value in, and then you guys are going to tell me what the value is. All right, let me find a secret value. Okay, so la 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 da 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 and oh, I've got a value of 2035. 2035. All right, let's see if you can get B's value from 2035. Everybody is saying that they're a little bit confused. I'm going to go over it again. I just want to see if anyone can take this total cost and use a formula to get B's value, and then I'll explain it one more time. It is a bit more challenging. Let's see. I'm sure someone there can get a value for B and then I'll go over this one more time. There was a guy on last week, his name was Pabalo. And I think Pabalo managed to work backwards in the formula to get an answer similar to this. Uh, and he's not here today. Yeah, he's not here today. Uh, They're asking how did they get um, the 250? Oh, that's the fixed cost. So in the question, there's a fixed cost of 250. So the original table had 400 in here. At that starting point, I think. And what guys did was they worked from that 400 in the table onwards to get their values. So those, uh, if you ignore the question and you go straight to the table and try to use the 400, then it gives you different answers. <laughs> it's not your main seat. All right, let's go back to the original question and see if we can't find it again. Let's go back to the original question. I think the values will pop up there. Ah, there they go. All right, so this was the original scenario. So we had the texture with some values in. Okay, and I said that we have a weekly fixed cost of 250. 
and Loews class A grand 40. But if you look at the first value in the table, it's 400, which means that this fixed cost and this 400 are different, which should be different. So if left to your own devices, what you guys started doing was you started saying, well, there's a, uh, an increase of 140 every single time. And then you use that to help you get A. So 680 plus the 140, 680 plus 140 is 820. That's why guys are getting answers for A of 820. Okay, because you were using the, the rule of there's a constant difference every time to jump to the answer of A using the table. You definitely didn't use a formula for that one. Okay, so you use the values in the table, which is another, which is a correct way of doing it. Okay, but there's a mistake in these values. All right. So we had to change the values in the table. And we don't do it by looking at the consecutive numbers. We have to use the formula. All right. So what I'll do is I'll show you again how I did it. I said, ah, these numbers are not correct. Let us remove them. And let's recalculate them. Okay. So now you can't find values for any of these unless you have a formula, which is the best way to solve this problem. All right. So we're going to create a formula on the calculator. Based on the question, we need a 250 rand fixed value, and we need 8 rand 50 per loaf, All right. So I'm going to say plus, I'm going to add here 8 rand 50 times however many loaves. For the first one, we have zero loaves. Okay. I just got it in brackets there because in my brain, I like to do certain parts first and I use brackets there. But the calculator, even if the brackets went there, would, would do the 8 rand 50 times zero first. All right, so now I'm going to say, if using this formula, what, is, what do I get if I have zero lobes? And the answer is 250. All right, so I'm going to put the value back in there, 250. So we see here, this is correct because the fixed value is 250. And without cooking any lobes or baking any lobes, we should still have 250 rand as a cost. All right, now I'm just going to change the formula and change our number of lobes to 40 to get 590. And then I'm going to do a change to 80, and that gives us 930. These are big values now. And for A, we can work that one out straight from the formula. Change it to 120, so we get 1270. 1270. And for 160, it's 1610. 1610. B, I'm going to leave out. 300, we can do. And that's 2800. All right. The question is can you find B? And I put in a value over here if the RAND value is 2035. Ah, there we go in Dingbana. That's it. That's the formula you need to use. Okay. Yes, I'm on the lessons ending at seven. We're almost done. Right. So let's see if this is, we can do this last question. And then I'll show you the equation. I'll just uh, write it out underneath. But let's see if you can find out B's value if you have 2,035 rand as a cost. Thank you, Amor. All right, 2035 as a cost. Can you work backwards? Here's a formula on my calculator if you want to work backwards. All right, but just remember that we don't know what that value is. Okay. You can think of it as a missing variable like X. All right, what is that X value if the cost is 2035? Okay, anyone, let's 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 show this to you guys. We'll work backwards. Oh, do we have an answer there? Are we adding plus freedom? Uh and then one, yes, we are. We are adding 40. There is a constant difference here. 
Yes, there is a constant difference here. Up until there. Okay, but these last two are totally different. So we can't use constant differences to find these last two. We're going to have to use a formula. So I want you guys to try and learn how to use a formula to find these. Uh, all right, we've got an answer there of 210 from Christy. Okay. I'll give you one more minute and see if anyone else can try to figure it out. 210 from Ave, good. You guys are using the formula now, which is fantastic. All right, let's check if these two guys are right. I'm sure there are more, but let's see if they're correct. Okay, so the formula we're gonna use is I'll use C for costs, okay? And we need 250 Rand, plus we need 8 Rand 50 times the loaves. All right, I'm gonna say L for loaves. I'll put that in a bracket because I really wanna do that one first on my calculator. But the calculator will do that first anyway. With that part, there's bot mass says you've got to do multiplication first. Okay. So the cost is 250 Rand plus 8 Rand 54 times the number of loaves that we have. Now, we don't have the number of loaves. We're trying to find the number of loaves. So we have a cost. So I'm going to put that in on this side. So 2035 is my cost. Okay. And this is 250 plus 8 Rand 50 times the number of loaves. And I want to find the number of loaves, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this 250 Rand. I'm going to take it away from the right-hand side of the equation and move it to the left. So we're going to first subtract 250 from our cost, and this will give us 8 Rand 50 times the number of loaves. All right, so let me do that on the calculator. So 2835. One is 250, that's 1785. So if we remove the cost, the fixed cost, we get 1785 for the number of loaves. And each one is 850. So what I need to do now, like I did previously, is divide by 850, both sides by 850, and let's see what we get. So 1785 divided by 850. 210. Very good. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you here is sometimes it can be dangerous to use a constant difference to find your solution. It, it is a possible, it is a method, especially if the question said um, determine, okay, determine the, the missing values that by any means necessary, then you can use the constant method, but be careful. If these numbers in this row change here at in, in any way so that there's not a constant difference, you might get tricked. Okay, so a formula is the best way to solve this problem, to create a formula in your head and then use the calculator to help solve the problem. Okay, ah, there we go, well done, very good. Okay. Uh, just be careful there, Carl. Uh, it's 210 and not 200 in your equation there. Just be careful. Sorry, 250 and not 200. Okay. All right. We're not going to do the last two questions. We'll leave it there for now. All right. Ladies and gents, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, next week, we will start the lesson with something similar to this. So we will revise, not next, next week on Thursday, we will revise in the next lesson with an example like this. So if you found a little bit shaky trying to solve something like this, we're going to start the next lesson with an example like this, uh, just to revise and remind you of how it works. But please try and remember from this lesson that you need to try and use a formula to help you uh, solve values in a calculator instead of um, the constant difference method. Yes, a constant difference can help, but be careful if the numbers change, you're going to get stuck. So please try to remember how to use a formula. All right, so if we build that formula skill, that will put you in good stead for the examination.